Steam is the most popular gaming platform on macOS. It offers the best AAA and indie games out there. Today, I'm going to be showing you the best ones for 2018. This list includes games from mid-2017 to mid-2018. However, some games were released before 2017, but ported to Mac in late 2017, if that makes sense. Anyway, here are the top 10 Mac Steam games of 2018. Starting at number 10, we have The Banner Saga 3. This is the final chapter in the acclaimed Banner Saga series, which have amazing reviews, and you guys have often remarked how much you loved the first two. The Banner Saga 3 features much of the same gameplay as prior entries, but offers more deep strategic combat with a new battle wave system and brings new characters and enemies. Plus, if you played the first two, this one carries on your own narrative and choices. This can lead to different climatic endings in the final chapter. The game is releasing in just a few days uh, upon the release of this episode, so I hope it is received well by gamers abroad. In Banner Saga 3, the end has come. Number 9 is F1 2017. Welcome to the best racing game on macOS right now. F1 2017 grants unprecedented access to not only the on-track excitement of Formula 1, but also the off-track dealings and vehicle development that goes along with it. The game's career mode includes practice programs, a research and development tree, and the ability to manage engines and gearboxes. Also, the cross-platform multiplayer is great here too, with a full grid of 20 cars, both current and classic. F1 2017 is honestly the best and most thrilling Formula 1 experience so far in the series. Number 8, we have Batman The Enemy Within. This game is made by Telltale, and I've been showing Telltale games on this channel since I started uploading way back in 2013. Let me know if you've been following me that long. Throughout that time, I have loved the dedication Telltale has shown towards uh, macOS, supporting a mammoth amount of their games to our platform. Batman The Enemy Within is the latest game from Telltale, and once again, I love it. It shows a story-based perspective of the Batman universe, presenting iconic characters like the Riddler, the Joker, Catwoman, Harley Quinn, and many more. The game now includes access to all five episodes. Number seven is Overload. From the creators of Descent comes Overload, a new first-person shooter game with a unique take on the genre. Anything fresh to the FPS genre is a good thing for me, as every new shooter that comes out lately feels a little similar, am I right? Overload appears to be a little different and has fluid controls and graphics that offers gamers 15 levels of single-player action, but also challenging modes and online multiplayer with up to eight players. It's a perfect game to just sit down after a day of school or, I don't know, work and relax and forget about your troubles. Number six, we have Tropico 6. I thought I would put at least one upcoming macOS game on this list, one that I knew will definitely see a Mac release. Tropico 6 is the latest game in the series. Players can prove themselves once again as a dictator or peace-loving statesman on the island state of Tropico and can shape the fate of their own banana republic through four distinctive eras. There are some new things here like managing extensive archipelagos, building bridges to connect islands, and new means of transportation and infrastructure. And there are some other new things too. New means of transportation will offer great opportunities of exchange to you and our visitors. Number five is Observer. A very dark take on our future is what Observer will present to you. It's a horror game, if you couldn't tell. And what I love about it is the dark color palettes, but also at the same time, it is kind of colorful, yeah? The story follows Dan Lazarski, an elite neutral detective. It's your job to hack and invade suspects' minds with the goal of solving cases. It shows a future where anything you think, 
feel or remember can be used against you in a court of law, which is terrifying if you ask me. Caution. <laughs> Subject expired during questioning. Emergency extraction procedure successful. Number four, we have Pillars of Eternity 2, Deadfire. When the first Pillars of Eternity was released, it was pretty much a success from the get-go. It broke records on Kickstarter for reaching 4 million and is considered one of the best RPG games for Mac. So Pillars of Eternity 2 was released uh, a little while ago this year, but you might want to know, is it worth your time? I'm going to say yes, this game is a big deal. It is worth your time. It's a worthy successor, but has also improved upon all the elements of the original. Visually, it looks better, and some would argue it plays better with improved and new naval combat. Number three is Celeste. This game shows a journey of self-discovery, but also facing inner demons. The gameplay is kind of similar to Super Meat Boy, but unlike that game, Celeste doesn't make me want to punch my Mac screen to death. Celeste is a challenging platform title, but it doesn't wear me out, and I always want to keep playing, even if I'm dying over and over and over again. The controls are actually quite simple too. You can simply jump, air dash, and climb. You'll die often, but each death is a lesson, which helps you to solve all of these levels. Number two, we have Deus Ex Mankind Divided. Brought to macOS by Feral Interactive late last year, Deus Ex Mankind Divided takes place in 2029 and follows Adam Jensen, a covert operative. Jensen is armed with an arsenal of weapons and augmentations that players can choose from. The game has many different ways to approach each encounter. Will you go in full guns blazing or take a more stealthy approach? Plus, the game has choices and consequences. Deus Ex Mankind Divided looks beautiful and plays like a gem on the machines it supports. Right now you need to concentrate on Miller and find a way to access the Innocent's mother. Let's look at some notable mentions. Wizard of Legend. Total War Saga Thrones of Britannia. Conquer the British Isles. Steam World Dig 2. Dirt Rally. A Hat in Time. Follow me, Rebel Squad. Tannenberg. Tacoma. And so for your enjoyment. Oh, oh. What the hell was that? Dead cells. Okay, you die. It happens. One more run. You've got this. Subnautica, which is a great game, don't get me wrong, but it isn't very well optimized on macOS right now. And finally, number one, we have Rise of the Tomb Raider. Even though it took Feral Interactive some time to port Rise of the Tomb Raider to our platform, I'm not even complaining. The game is a masterpiece and looks fantastic on the Macs that support it. For the most part, it plays like the 2013 game, but has been more defined with a richer story and upgraded gameplay mechanics that present the best Lara Croft yet. If you're looking for an awesome action-adventure game, look towards Rise of the Tomb Raider. You won't be disappointed. Also, here's to hoping Feral Interactive works their magic on a Mac version of the upcoming Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Fingers crossed. Those are the top 10 Mac Steam games of 2018. Have you tried out or will you try out any of these games? Were you more happy with last year's Steam episode? Let me know all your thoughts in the comments. Anyway, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye bye.